Hey folks, happy Saturday morning to you. It's Pastor Brian. I'm coming to you today from uh, Phoenix, uh, Arizona, actually Maricopa. It's Friday afternoon. My daughter is playing in, uh, she's a competitive soccer player and she her team uh, decided to go over to Arizona to play games for the weekend because uh, California is not open to play games yet. And so we're all over here, social distance as you can be, uh, wearing masks. I just took mine off um, and uh, over here for the weekend the desert is beautiful um, it's uh, about five almost five o'clock and it's about uh, about 90 degrees it's still pretty warm outside but uh, clouds are beautiful you see some of the mountains in the background so um, I thought as we did a devotion today you could uh, take a look at that so we continue um, this week that uh, our overarching theme is that we are a product of a gracious God and our thought for the day is um, for Saturday October 24 he sent Jesus to reconcile and redeem me to him so we are the product of a gracious God he God sent Jesus to reconcile and redeem me to him. So let's look at those scriptures. The first one is John 3, 16 and 17, a famous one. If you've been studying the Bible much or been in church much, um, you've heard a lot of this. Um, you can even go to sporting events and see this um, on uh, uh, signs. You can go to parades, different places. This is the verse that uh, everyone shows uh, to talk about redemption. So John, uh, Gospel of John 3, 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the son into the world to condemn the world but in order that the world might be saved through him. And let me just point out, you know, right now we live in a very contentious world. Uh, not just our nation but our world. We believe as Christians that God wants to redeem the entire world, not our nation, not uh, just uh, Methodists, not just the people of our church, not just the people that, that look like us or that think like us, that God wants to redeem the entire world. We believe that because that's what the biblical witness says. For God so loved the world, not just Christians, the world. Uh, all right, downfall to doing devotions outside are uh, bugs in the evening. So that's John 3.16. Now we move over to Romans. So uh, just go uh, uh, maybe 20 pages. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Um, then Acts. Then Romans. So Romans chapter 8 verse 32 Romans 8 32 you there all right Romans 8 32 he who did not withhold his own son but gave him up for all of us will he not with him also give us everything else and so you know, of course, we're, what we're talking about here is, is atonement theology, right? That Jesus atones for our sins, that, that we were sinful, the punishment for sin is death and separation from God, that Jesus is a substitute, um, so substitutionary atonement. Jesus is a substitute for us. He atones for our sins, um, and now um, we are reconciled to God through his accepting of our punishment. And it says here, so if, if, uh, but if he gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? So, so if, if God gave Jesus up for us, then do we get the same eternal rewards that Jesus got, which is life in heaven with the Father? That's the question that the Romans were asking. All right, next is 2 Corinthians. So keep going. Um, just after Romans is, is uh, the Corinthians book. So go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 8. 2 Corinthians 5, 8. 
Yes, we do have confidence and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So, so go back to that question. Do we get the same eternal rewards as Jesus? And here in Corinthians is saying, yes, we do. And we would rather be away from our body. It would be better to be uh, for, at, at death for our souls to escape our bodies and for us to be united with God. That that would be a better eternity. All right, then let's turn over into Psalm. So right in the middle of your Bible, we're going to go to Psalm 103. All right, Psalm 103, verse 3. And let me just start at 2. Bless the Lord, Lord, O oh my soul, and do not forget all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good as long as you live, so that your youth is renewed like a eagle's. Look that scripture up and you'll find lots and lots and lots of scriptures uh, or songs that are based on that lots of songs that about uh, you know lifting being lifted up on eagles wings but then there's also a um a uh, modern praise song that uh, one of the the lines uh, bless the lord oh my soul lots of music that is written about that so that we might remember that it is god who forgives us who heals us who redeems us who crowns us with steadfast love and mercy who satisfies you with good as long as you live so that your youth is renewed like eagles. So the question does, he sent Jesus to reconcile and redeem me to him. The scripture, especially the New Testament, attests time and time and time again that Jesus was sent as the savior, as the redeemer of our lives. So that God is gracious, that we are a product of a God of a gracious God. We're a product of a gracious God in the way that God grows us day by day, by the way that God leads us here on earth, by the way that you get these uh, you know little hints about which way you ought to go, or God is gracious in the ways that God has provided people to teach us and to lead us and to mentor us. And all of us have stories about people who have done that. And all of that is the act of God's grace. God is gracious in, in giving us the people who we have the opportunity. Uh, to teach by giving us our families but above everything else we know that we are a product of a God of a gracious God because God sends his son to redeem us and make us whole thanks be to God have a great weekend God bless